Road Tripping Across America. Capturing the checkered flag. Smashing through a wall of fire. Reading a wartime letter from the front. Debuting a new motorcycle. When it comes to connecting the dots between the people and moments in over a century of Harley Davidson history, there's probably no richer resource than the pages of The Enthusiast magazine. The Enthusiast was Harley Davidson's immensely popular magazine for all things motorcycling. First issued in 1916, it became one of the longest running motorcycle publications and was an important place where the company and its riders could share their passion for motorcycling. The motor company had been producing its first magazine, the Harley Davidson Dealer, since 1912. It was aimed at dealers and filled with stories of happy buyers and examples for marketing Harley Davidson motorcycles. Riders saw it and wanted their own magazine. The company tried two different rider-focused publications, the Motorcycle News for prospective buyers and the Harley Davidson Bulletin for owners. For a brief window in 1916, the company was actually producing three magazines at once before narrowing it to one, the Harley Davidson Enthusiast. The first issue of The Enthusiast reached readers in early March of 1916. It was mailed to everyone who purchased a factory registered motorcycle, a practice that continued throughout its long history and would quickly expand to include subscribers too. Inside the cover was a message to readers introducing this new publication for red-blooded men and women who enjoy motorcycling. The first article was written by Effie Hotchkiss. Effie supported her family by working on Wall Street after her father died, but she never stopped dreaming about escaping the city. When a physician told her she was heading for what we today would call burnout, Effie bought a motorcycle and used her nights and weekends learning to ride and repair it. That first story in The Enthusiast is well known today. It chronicles the adventures of Effie and her mother Avis riding over 9,000 miles from Brooklyn to San Francisco and back. They hadn't set out to make history, but they were the first women to cross the country on a motorcycle. The first issue and the many that followed also covered racing competitions, riding tips, Harley Davidson clothing and accessories, and messages from the company. This is your magazine began the second issue of The Enthusiast as it encouraged writers to send in their stories and ideas. From the start, Harley Davidson knew they wanted the voice of the writer in The Enthusiast. The Enthusiast included not just photographs of riders and their machines, but stories of their triumphs and adventures too, reflecting everything from farming in rural Iowa and business in New York, to race wins in Peru and endurance rides in Belgium. Travel stories were an especially prominent writer submission. They provided both escapism and entertainment. Writers shared, often in great detail, the routes they took, their impressions of the sites they visited, how their machines ran, and the people they met along the way. Looking through the pages of The Enthusiast was like taking a vacation yourself. Motorcycle clubs were another source of writer contributions. Officially introduced to the magazine as a recurring column in the 1920s, club-generated content grew to include brief updates, photos of members and activities, and longer stories recounting club tours and outings. In their heyday, club content could make up almost half an issue. Writers were the linchpin, but The Enthusiast was also a platform for the motor company to promote machines and accessories, recognize factory visitors, and celebrate the decades of competition wins featuring some of the brightest stars. From the original factory race team to dirt track legend Joe Petrali and flat track prodigy Jay Springsteen. The company added comic strips to almost every issue in the 1920s and 30s. And for about five of those years, the cartoon was usually devoted to Nobby Ned, a simple guy who enjoyed motorcycling. Comics were an important diversion in the late 20s and 30s. While the world experienced a depression, writers in the comics were out having fun. 
the enthusiast revived comics in the 1960s and 70s via illustrations and other cartoons. Comics had come into the fold under Howard Hap Jameson, who was the most prolific company contributor to The Enthusiast. Recruited by Arthur Davidson, Jameson worked as a test writer, educator in the service school, advertising model, and eventually a dealer. But a landmark role in his tenure at the Motor Company began in 1922 when he became publicity director, taking leadership of The Enthusiast. He wrote mechanical advice, short fiction, and reviewed new models, typically under pseudonyms, the most well-known being Uncle Frank. Uncle Frank's service tips and advice were quick-witted, competent, and extremely popular, so much so that people came to the factory looking for Frank, unaware he was just a persona. The enthusiast even had its own celebrity, Vivian Bales. The dance instructor from Georgia traveled the country by motorcycle in 1929 after teaching herself to ride at age 17. Nicknamed the Enthusiast Girl because of how often she appeared in the publication, Bales graced two covers and could be found in 11 issues, capturing the hearts of enthusiast readers all over the world. Combined, the contents of the Enthusiast show Harley Davidson riders and machines permeating history. From attending the Olympics and World's Fairs, to breaking land speed records and fearlessly charging into the future. No historic events were as deeply reflected in the pages of The Enthusiast than the First and Second World Wars. More than reminders to buy war bonds and depictions of active duty, we see the unbreakable spirit of the Harley-Davidson community. During World War II, as Harley-Davidson WLA motorcycles were shipped out from the factory for service, letters were streaming in, bound for The Enthusiast. In these letters, servicemen reminisced past rides and planned for future ones. They lauded the durability of their WLA machines, and they requested copies of the magazine to share with those they served beside. The Enthusiast was a way to stay connected, both back home and across the world. From hill climbs to camping and fishing, whether off-road or down the highway, Jack Fletcher at Mount Baldy, or a group of motor maids touring together, the cover of The Enthusiast typically illustrated the exciting activities and places a Harley-Davidson could take you. Though that idea remained, the look adapted over time, reflecting both trends in motorcycling and graphic design. In the 1930s, The Enthusiast began experimenting with the images and the title fonts, creating some dramatic departures from the traditional look established in the teens and 20s. The next decade saw many covers dedicated to the Second World War depicting wartime imagery with and without motorcycles, underlining the significance of the historical moment. At the same time, celebrities like Clark Gable, Rita Hayworth, and Betty Grable were a lighthearted countermeasure. The 1960s and 70s saw bold changes in style, embracing color blocking, illustrations, and a variety of fonts. Racers dominated the scene, with Mert Lal debuting what would become the iconic number one logo. The covers took a new direction in later years. With the Harley-Davidson lifestyle firmly established, motorcycles themselves featured more prominently on the cover. The century-long history of the motor company began to shine. Numerous issues of The Enthusiast dedicated space to celebrating the heritage of the company and its riders, reprinting and recreating iconic moments in our history. Momentous events like the buyback from AMF, the launch of the Harley Owners Group, and milestone anniversaries of the company's founding were emblazoned on the cover. Inside, the enthusiast continued its tradition of sharing writer stories and company news, until, echoing its 1916 beginnings, it merged with another Harley-Davidson publication. In 2009, the enthusiast joined with Hog Tales, the publication of the Harley Owners Group, to become Hog Magazine. After a little more than a decade, Harley-Davidson is going back to its roots, turning that dotted line into a circle and returning to the enthusiast title. In partnership with the Harley Owners Group and embracing the legacy of everything that came before, the magazine continues to give all enthusiasts reasons to keep riding and a place to share those reasons in the annals of motorcycle history.